Shen Yao, who is only twenty years old, died in a car accident. In order to continue her life, she bound a birth system. For each small world mission completed, she will receive a lifespan of 100 years, a wealth of 10 billion yuan, and other additional rewards. World 1. Abstinence CEO's eunuch secretary, completed, cold and ruthless abstinence CEO Jiang Jinchuan, who has never been close to women, meets the beautiful, charming, and delicate eunuch secretary Shen Yao, who gradually loses control and turns around. World 2. The seductive little nanny of a cold and childless boss. Chapter 1. Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 01. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Hello, new here. Take this document and go over there to make three copies before giving it to me. It should be completed within ten seconds, okay? At the moment Xin Yao opened her eyes, she saw the woman in front of her, dressed in a white shirt and a hip wrap skirt, with heavy makeup and makeup, proudly throwing herself a paper document. And beside her, there was a woman with a square face and a somewhat rustic attire, holding a cup of fragrant coffee. She respectfully and carefully handed it to her, saying, Lucy, the temperature of the coffee is just right. Could you please bring it in to Mr. Jiang? Upon hearing the words, Mr. Jiang, the woman in front of her, who was known as, Lucy's sister, with heavy makeup and makeup, withdrew her haughty expression when facing Shen Yao and transformed into a gentle and small demeanor. She smiled and took the coffee from the square-faced woman's hand. However, it is unknown whether it is because her mind has already drifted away and her attention is not in her hands. The next second, the coffee in her hand suddenly tilted for some reason, and it overflowed a lot. Unfortunately, it dirted the document in her hand that had not yet been accepted by Xin Yao. On the white paper, the dark coffee stains seemed to still carry warmth and fragrance, while Lucy's expression began to become indescribable. She widened her eyes and looked at the dirty information in her hand in a somewhat flustered manner. Then, as if realizing something, she turned to anger and glared at Xin Yao. The next second, the warm cup of coffee in her hand poured over Xin Yao's face without hesitation. Everything happened too quickly, and Xin Yao didn't even have time to react, however, in that moment, the coffee that came toward Xin Yao suddenly froze in mid-air, as if frozen. At the same time, the woman in front of her and the environment around her suddenly came to a complete standstill. Xin Yao's eyes flickered slightly, and the next second, she heard the familiar mechanical sound coming from her mind, ding, the connection to the small world has been completed, the screen has been paused, and the plot of the small world is currently being analyzed. As soon as the mechanical sound in Xin Yao's mind finished speaking, a huge virtual electronic screen appeared in front of her, with the four big characters, birth system, prominently written in the upper left corner of the screen. And in the center of the screen, it reads, in the plot analysis of, the secretary of the CEO of abstinence, if half an hour ago, Xin Yao could have been frightened by the scene before her, but now, she can look at everything in front of her quite calmly. Half an hour ago, Xin Yao, who had just turned twenty, experienced a very serious car accident on her birthday. As she passed away, her desire to survive remained extremely strong. In the second before the rescue was ineffective and she completely lost her vital signs, she only had time to regret that her life's money had not been spent, her love had not been discussed, her marriage had not been concluded, and her child had not been born the next second, the soul will detach from its body and float above. At the moment when her soul was about to dissipate, a mechanical sound suddenly appeared in her mind. Do you want to continue living then there is a ten second countdown. Shen Yao rushed to the last three seconds of the countdown, answered it, and then came to the small world now. On the way through the time and space tunnel, it answered all the questions she asked, and she finally understood what she needed to do if she wanted to continue her life. Overall, it is a system that emits mechanical sounds, created by the gods as a birth system for a deity from the East to experience and serve in the human world. Before the eastern deity went down to the mortal world for training, even if the higher deity knew that he would face difficulties in inheriting offspring in the human world. 
Fearing that his lack of experience in inheriting offspring would lead to the failure and disappearance of his training, the Divine created a birth system specifically to assist him in his training. The fundamental reason for his difficulty in inheriting offspring is not due to physical problems, on the contrary, because he is a god, even if he transforms into a physical body, his body's various functions are far higher than ordinary people, and he is also gifted in inheriting offspring. Why does he still face difficulties in inheriting offspring? In fact, it is because his deity is too cold, and his desires in certain aspects are too shallow or even non-existent. Therefore, even if he transforms into a physical body, loses his memories, and experiences in the human world, he will be unconsciously influenced by his original deity. The birth system will carefully select a human host with a chance encounter to accompany this experienced deity into various small worlds and complete the birth task. During the task, the system can provide the host with various reasonable services, allowing the host to complete the task more smoothly. For every task completed in a small world, the host will gain a lifespan of 100 years and a wealth of 10 billion. In addition, there will be additional lottery rewards, allowing the host to have the opportunity to draw various prizes. Due to the desire to continue her life and the temptation of abundant task rewards, Shen Yao ultimately decided to officially bind with the birth system. Moreover, she has also agreed with the system that her original body will perform the task, as she does not want to complete the task by occupying someone else's body. The main reason is actually that she doesn't want her body to always be in the same miserable state as after the car accident, and then be buried alone forever in the cold underground. Simply put, she wants her spirit and flesh to merge. So she took the initiative to request the system to help her retrieve her body and allow her severely injured and damaged body to be repaired. In this way, after being fixed by the system, she became even more beautiful and charming, dressed in this small world. She had just finished her memories when the mechanical sounds in her mind began to speak again, ding, the plot analysis of the secretary of the CEO of abstinence has been completed, and it is now being connected to the host sea of consciousness. The next second, Shen Yao felt dizzy for a moment, and then a brand new plot came to her mind. This so dot called plot is only a virtual plot simulated by the system and does not actually exist. The generated virtual storylines are only intended to give the host a better understanding of the background of the small world and the personalities of the characters, in order to avoid being at a loss. In the plot, she saw that the eastern deity was the male protagonist Jiang Jinchuan in the small world, a cold and abstinent CEO of a listed company. And she is Shen Yao, the secretary of Jiang Jinchuan. In the plot, Shen Yao comes from a poor family and wants to stay and work in a big city after graduating from college. Due to her relatively niche major, the jobs she can find are not very good, and the salary and benefits are not high. By chance, she saw that Jiang Group was recruiting a secretary, and the job responsibilities described in the job description were not complicated, but the salary offered was very high. Therefore, she eagerly applied. Chapter 2 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 02 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Not long after the interview, she really received an offer to join. So, just after graduating, she came to work at Jiang Group at the specific time of joining, as the secretary of the male lead Jiang Jinchuan. However, on her first day as a secretary at Jiangshu Group, she realized the reason why the salary for this job was so high. Firstly, her immediate supervisor, Jiang Jinchuan, is very picky in her work and is also very picky about the professional level and psychological quality of her secretary. The reason why Xin Yao was able to pass the interview is not because of her professional level, but because of her own resilience. Simply put, she has good psychological qualities and can handle things. Considering that she is a fresh graduate, Jiang Jinchuan is not too conflicted about her blank work experience. However, it is precisely because she is just a blank slate that after joining the Jiang group, she needs to work hard every day to improve herself, strive to become more outstanding, and strive to be recognized by her boss Jiang Jinchuan, 
and then officially passed the probationary assessment to stay. In addition, Shen Yao also found it difficult to get along with her colleagues in the same secretary department. Especially Li Lu, who is called Lucy, is particularly difficult to get along with in her daily work. In the short week since she joined, Lucy always found opportunities to make things difficult for her. At first, she didn't know why, but later she realized that the reason was Lucy's jealousy that she was specially recruited by the CEO, because Xin Yao was the only fresh graduate in their department with no work experience. In addition, Xin Yao is very beautiful, with a seductive figure and younger than Lucy, which quickly broke through Lucy's defense. She was very afraid that the CEO would take a liking to Xin Yao, causing her to lose the opportunity to climb up. That's why she was so eager to make things difficult for her and try to drive her away. That's why the opening scene happened. The plot came to an end at this point, and Xin Yao felt that there was still some room for improvement. She asked the system, why is the plot of this world so brief? The system explained to Xin Yao, as it is a simulation of the plot, it will only parse the time node where you connect to the small world and its previous plot, and there will be no subsequent plot. Because the subsequent plot needs to be interpreted by yourself. Xin Yao thought for a moment and realized that there were benefits to her own performance. She could do whatever she wanted in the future, and even if she thought about it, she could still accept it. However, the most important issue is assistance. She can't fight alone in a strange world, can she? So she asked the system straightforwardly, do I have any props to use during the task execution? System. Of course, there are many props to use. Moreover, the small world will rationalize the operations and data of both you and the deities you wear. Shen Yao finally felt at ease, then silently lifted her foot and moved out of the spot where the coffee was splashed, then made a dodge-like posture on her side. Immediately after, a mechanical sound came to my mind. Ding, the small world scene has been restored. Due to Shen Yao's first step of misplacing the coffee, when the scene came back to life, everyone only saw Shen Yao flexibly avoiding the cup of coffee that Lucy had spilled. However, no one could see clearly how she did it. Seeing Shen Yao skillfully avoiding this situation, Lucy was very angry. But she thought that the CEO was still waiting for coffee, so she gritted her teeth and endured it. Then she said to the woman with a square face next to her, Hurry up and get me another cup of coffee. I need to deliver it to Mr. Jiang faster. The other party responded respectfully and humbly, Okay, I'll go now. After the square-faced woman left, Lucy suddenly noticed that her colleagues in the office seemed to be looking at her, so she angrily said, What are you looking at? With such a scolding, they instantly averted their gaze. Lucy still feels frustrated. She never thought that she would have a day when a newly graduated college student would play tricks on her. Daring to hide from her coffee makes her so embarrassed, right? Then wait for being fired. People who don't listen have no need to stay. Shen Yao, right? Hurry up and get back to your workstation, then pack up and leave. I will officially inform you that your probation period has ended and you have been fired. Upon hearing this, Shen Yao's face remained calm and composed. Oh. Lucy, what you just said was, I was fired, right? Lucy gritted her teeth and said, that's right, within an hour, pack your things and get out of here. Shen Yao chuckled lightly and said, what a big tone. Maybe I just started working and didn't know or understand enough. It turns out that this Jiang group is managed by you, Lucy. Lucy frowned and said, what are you talking nonsense about? You're talking nonsense. But I remember that my immediate supervisor was Mr. Jiang, the president of the Jiang group. If I were to be fired, would Mr. Jiang himself be the one to do so? Or would you say, Lucy, that you have more authority than Mr. Jiang? Lucy felt a bit flustered now, feeling dizzy from being surrounded by Xin Yao, while some colleagues in the office covered their mouths and secretly laughed. They laughed not at Xin Yao's counterattack, but at Lucy, who had been a secretary for so many years, and was an old fogey, 
who had to be caught by a newly graduated college student and then had the upper hand. It's really embarrassing to think about it, there's a feeling that stealing a chicken doesn't backfire and erodes the rice. Chapter 3 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 03 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Shen Yao continued. So Lucy, you want to fire me, right? Well, I'll go to President Zhang's office now and ask President Zhang, Zhang's group, whether it's his the final say or your Lucy the final say. Lucy became even more panicked now. She quickly stopped Shen Yao and said stiffly, I was just joking earlier, don't take it seriously. Oh, that's such a big joke, and it sounds extremely interesting. It's so interesting that I want to personally go to Mr. Jiang and talk to him, making him happy too. Don't think she doesn't know, Lucy made it clear that she wanted to drive her away first. After she left the office, she immediately went to Mr. Zhang's office to report that she was absent from work for no reason, absent without permission, which would make her look very bad, and then let the company dismiss her. If she really gets angry and runs away, then she's foolishly being tricked. Besides, Shen Yao also wants to argue for an explanation about her splashing her own coffee. By the way, Lucy, what did you mean when you suddenly spilled coffee on me just now? If I hadn't dodged in time, I might have been scalded by now. Lucy's lips moved and explained hesitantly, I. I just accidentally slipped my hand, it wasn't intentional. Shen Yao sneered, slippery hands. But you just splashed so hard, it seemed like you were throwing it at me with force. Look at the coffee on the ground, it can splash so far, indicating that you must have been putting in a lot of effort. If there is anything I did wrong at work, you can tell me directly. Why do you want to vent your anger by splashing my coffee? Is it true that the culture within the Jiang group is like this? Colleagues can use violence to solve problems. As soon as Shen Yao finished speaking, the atmosphere in the office suddenly changed, and it was obvious that everyone's emotions had changed. Shen Yao spoke more and more vigorously, even secretly squeezing out a few tears while pinching her thighs. Lucy, I didn't say a word just now, so you just poured coffee on my face. Do you think it was me who did it to you first? And, isn't the cup of coffee you spilled on me meant to be delivered to Mr. Jiang? Mr. Jiang is still waiting for you to deliver the coffee in the office, maybe even in a hurry, but you have the leisure to pour the coffee you gave him on my face here. Shen Yao spoke tearfully, like a repeating machine, repeatedly emphasizing the matter of pouring coffee. She didn't realize that halfway through her words, there was suddenly no other sound in the office, only her voice was left. Fortunately, I dodged quickly. Otherwise, if coffee really spilled on my face, I would have to cry and go to the CEO's office to collect work that related injury compensation from Mr. Jiang. No, I shouldn't ask Mr. Jiang to get the compensation for work.related injuries. I should get the compensation from you and Lucy. After all, in Jiang's group, Lucy decides everything. As soon as she finished speaking, the temperature in the air seemed to drop a bit. Shen Yao chuckled to herself, and now Lucy had nothing to say. Just as Shen Yao felt that she was performing well, a cold voice suddenly came from behind. What are you doing? Upon hearing this sound, Lucy's face lost its color and her hands trembled faintly. Shen Yao looked calmly at the person speaking, and then saw a tall and upright body dressed neatly. Looking up, her face was as handsome, noble, and exquisite as a heavenly god, which caught her eye. The cold expression on his face and the strong sense of abstinence emanating from his body made him tremble uncontrollably. Shen Yao quietly called out to the system, this should be our male lead Jiang Jinchuan, right? Shen Yao originally intended to say the word Eastern Deity, but she also felt that she should weaken the fact that the other party is a superior deity in the future. Otherwise, she really wouldn't have the courage to approach the other person proactively, let alone carry out the shameful task of giving birth to the other person. The system proudly replied to Shen Yao, yes, he is our Eastern Deity, the male protagonist of the small world, Jiang Jinchuan. Shen Yao. Alright, I know your master is a god, 
so there's no need to emphasize it next time. Having obtained a positive answer, Shen Yao's heart was filled with a bit of contemplation. Jiang Jinchuan must have heard most of what she just said to Lucy, and he doesn't know who he will stand on. Will he choose to favor his senior employees? Or will they speak up for a new employee who has been on the job for less than a week? Shen Yao was actually not sure in her heart, and couldn't guess what kind of choice Jiang Jinchuan would make. However, there is one truth she still knows, which is that children who can cry will have milk to eat. So she took a step ahead of Lucy and quickly shed a string of crystal clear tears. And he put on the best and most delicate posture towards Jiang Jinchuan, pretending pitifully, I'm sorry, Lucy. It's me who can't make you angry. I should just stand there and pour coffee on you honestly, instead of avoiding it. This way, you won't be so angry anymore. I haven't been working for long, and I still don't understand many of the rules. I will have to work hard for you to personally guide me on the rules of the Jiang group, after all, no one knows more than you. The more Shen Yao said, the more stiff Lucy's face became. After a while, Lucy finally realized and quickly explained in the direction of Jiang Jinchuan, Mr. Jiang, I didn't mean to, it's just that this newcomer's work wasn't completed. I was a bit anxious for a moment, and then my hand accidentally slipped. Jiang Jinchuan looked at them coldly, uninterested in these farces. However, subconsciously, he flashed through Xin Yao's repeated accusations in his mind, glancing at her with an inexplicable expression in his eyes. Jiang Jinchuan's silence made Lucy panic. Just as she wanted to explain something more, Jiang Jinchuan suddenly smiled. Just that smile, as cold as the underworld king from hell, without any warmth, and even some displeasure. Li Lu, right. Within a day, hand over all your work to this new employee, and then go through the resignation process in the HR department. After Jiang Jinchuan finished speaking, he glanced lightly at Xin Yao, who was still wiping away her tears, and then turned around to leave. Chapter 4 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 04 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After Jiang Jinchuan left, the silence in the office was broken and everyone began to discuss. I've been tired of Li Lu for a long time, but today we finally have someone who can cure her. This is not a cure, it's a direct kick. This Li Lu, relying on having a backstage, is pulling like something every day. Now, it's over. He was directly fired by Mr. Zhang. It's really satisfying. Yeah, Li Lu alone made our office a mess. Now as soon as she leaves, the air will become fresh. Lucy stared at Xin Yao, with a look that was bound to hold a grudge against her. Xin Yao pondered and felt a bit complicated when she thought about what Jiang Jinchuan had said before leaving, asking Lucy to hand over all the work to her. System, do you have any props that can help me quickly master workplace skills? Xin Yao was actually very helpless, after all, at the moment of her death, she was only twenty years old, and she had not even graduated from university, let alone had any rich work experience. The key is that Xin Yao in the plot is also a workplace novice, and she can't even find a place to learn workplace skills from the plot. To quickly take over Lucy's handover work in a short period of time and avoid being pushed into the pit by her, she must quickly master some work skills in the workplace. There is less than a day left now, so it is definitely too late for her to learn. Therefore, to be on the safe side, she can only seek help from the system, hoping that the system can provide her with useful props to get through this level. The system certainly did not reject her, as it believed it was also a reasonable demand. After all, the host needs to hold on to this job first. Only by holding on to this job can she continue to approach the Eastern Divine Lord and be more likely to complete the task of having children. So it quickly began searching for available props, and in the end, it found a small prop called Workplace Elite. Prop Name Workplace Elite Prop Effect Enable the host to possess high dot quality skills such as small world elite thinking, innovative thinking, management skills, and interpersonal skills. Before using it for Xin Yao, the system emphasized, 
host, our system does not advocate the behavior of relying on system props and being complacent without progress. As a beginner, in the first small world, we can relax some conditions so that you can use more props to pass smoothly. When it comes to the later small world, obtaining props may not be as easy as it is now. Upon hearing this, Xinyao couldn't help but wonder, didn't you promise me at that time that you would provide various reasonable services? The system explained, this is not a very reasonable service. What I mean by a reasonable service is all services related to childbirth. For example, if you want to increase your chances of getting pregnant, or if you want to make your child healthier, or if you want to alleviate the pain during pregnancy, childbirth, and other services, it is considered a reasonable service determined by the system Xinyao. To put it simply, she can only open cheats in the first small world, and in the later small world, she can't easily open cheats. Seeing Xinyao's sudden wilting appearance, the system added, Host, you don't have to be too discouraged. Although our system won't actively provide you with so many items, you can still use points to redeem them yourself. Integral Exchange Shen Yao's eyes suddenly ignited a glimmer of hope again. She anxiously asked the system, what points? Do I have points now? The system patiently explained, for every task completed in a small world, wouldn't you gain a lifespan of 100 years and a wealth of 10 billion? That 10 billion yuan worth of wealth is equivalent to 10 billion points, so you can draw any value from it, exchange it for points, and then use the points to exchange for props by this calculation, the money sent out by the system can always be collected in another way. Shen Yao. Your system understands anti-fraud. Let me ask you, for example, how many points do you need to redeem this workplace elite item in your system? The system replied, it's not expensive, just 10 million points. Shen Yao. That's quite expensive. Time was running out, and Shen Yao quickly applied the elite props in the workplace to herself, then paused for a moment to feel its effect. Quickly, she felt that her mind had become much clearer and more enriched in an instant, as if there was a continuous stream of rich content bursting out in her mind, and then quickly absorbed by her brain. Shortly after she finished using the props, Lucy took the initiative to come over and threw a stack of materials heavily onto her desk. Humph, Shen Yao, do you think relying solely on lip service to take me away is considered a success? In this world, there are many people and customs that you cannot see. I think we will meet again soon. During this time, I will take it as leaving for vacation. When I come back, you will be there to see us. It will be a long time. And. Lucy lengthened the tone. I want to see how you can catch something that doesn't belong to you. After speaking, she sat directly on the empty chair next to Xin Yao and looked at her with interest, as if waiting to see her show. If ten minutes ago, without using any props, Xin Yao would have been a little uneasy when she heard Lucy say this. But unfortunately, she has already started cheating, and in this secretary's office, she is almost in an unbeatable state. So her confidence was strong, and her tone of voice began to become tough. Lucy, don't talk so much nonsense. Hurry up and start the handover, so as not to have Mr. Jiang personally come out to urge you. Lucy gritted her teeth and said, Oh, I can only say everything once. It doesn't matter if you don't understand me. Shen Yao was too lazy to argue with her so much, so she reached out and pointed at the pile of information on the table. Let's start quickly, she said Shen Yao took control of the initiative, which made Lucy feel uncomfortable. However, whenever she thought about the handover matters she was going to talk to her about, as a newly graduated college student, she would be confused and unable to understand them, feeling relieved again. Chapter 5 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 05 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lucy's handover was very perfunctory, to the extent that even without the use of workplace elite props, Shen Yao could still see it. Stop it, Lucy, you're not doing this. Shen Yao interrupted her directly. Shen Yao, are you deliberately picking on trouble, right? Lucy frowned. 
she actually relied on whether Xin Yao could understand or not, intending to casually hand it over and then leave. Who knew that Xin Yao had even noticed it? It's really unlucky. Forgive me for being blunt, what you just said is all nonsense. Let's start over and be serious, Xin Yao frowned and said with a hint of authority in her tone. Lucy. What? Is she an old employee or is Xin Yao an old employee? How dare a newly graduated workplace novice step on his own head? Just as she was about to fiercely confront Xin Yao, a person suddenly appeared behind them. Lai Ren is Jiang Jinchuan's most capable assistant, Secretary He. Secretary Li, Secretary Shen, and Mr. Jiang asked me to come and assist them in completing the handover, Secretary He said gently. If you were to say who Lucy is most afraid of in this secretary's office, it must be undoubtedly Secretary He. Since she had a big setback with Secretary He, she no longer dared to easily provoke her. Sure enough, as soon as she saw Secretary He, Lucy's aura dissipated quite a bit. Under the pressure of Secretary He, Lucy handed over the work on her hands honestly and completely, and then handed over all the electronic and paper materials that should be handed over to Xinyao to her. After all the tasks were handed over, Lucy felt as if her head had been drained, waves of exhaustion. After returning to her workstation, she hesitated for a while before getting up and walking towards the CEO's office, completing the final process. She only went in for about a minute before coming out and returning to her workstation, starting to pack up and prepare to leave the company. Although Lucy resigned, there was no hint of sadness on her face, but rather a hint of joy and pride. Only she knows how strong the reliance is behind her, and I believe that in less than a month, she will be able to return here again, and it will still be the kind of person asked to come back. Asterisk Xinyao opened the handover documents that Lucy had sent her one by one, and her expression gradually turned into disgust. How could there be such a messy file classification? The records and summaries of the project are also in a mess the bidding documents cannot even match the latest and draft versions moreover, during the handover process, Lucy made many mistakes, but it was Secretary He who promptly corrected her. If it weren't for the usual look on Secretary He's face just now, Xin Yao would have thought that these were all Lucy's small moves specially made to prank her. Xin Yao actually had some doubts. With Lucy's workability, could she stay under the discerning eyes of Jiang Jinchuan until now? I don't know how she did it either. I don't think so. Is there any big support behind it? Shen Yao pondered for a moment, then poked the system and said, Do you know why that Lucy is so horizontal? The system quickly gave a response. Lucy was a person personally brought in by Mrs. Jiang, the mother of Jiang Jinchuan. Of course, she can walk horizontally in the small secretary department. Mrs. Jiang has set her sights on Lucy's family, who have been able to give birth for several generations, and believes that she also has a more pregnant physique. Therefore, she arranged for her to become Jiang Jinchuan's secretary, hoping that one day she would be favored by Jiang Jinchuan and give birth to more children for him Xinyao. The reason why Mrs. Jiang did this is mainly because she always sees Jiang Jinchuan looking carefree and has no intention of starting a family when she gets old. She even doesn't even talk about love all day long, appearing uninterested in girls. Fearing that he might like a man, after cutting off the Jiang family, Mrs. Jiang ordered the Jiang group secretary department to only recruit women in the future, and there must be no man present to avoid attracting her son's attention upon hearing this, Shen Yao finally understood. She spoke indifferently, so Mrs. Zhang's heavy responsibility as a parasite is on Lucy's body, and she has been protecting her. If that's the case, she should be back in the secretary's office soon, right? The system paused and said, you can think of it this way. Shen Yao felt helpless. She thought she could successfully send Lucy away this time. Just as Shen Yao was about to say something more to the system, the landline machine at her workstation suddenly rang with a ringing bell. Hello, Shen Yao said after it rang three times, Shen Yao, come in for a moment. It was an internal call from Jiang Jinchuan, and he hung up as soon as he finished speaking. Shen Yao. The handover has just been completed, 
and I haven't even touched the materials yet. Should we start working? Chapter 6 Abstinence CEO's Unix Secretary 06 You are listening at NovelFull.audio On the way to the CEO's office, Xinyao suddenly remembered something and quickly asked the system, are there any props that can make people unlucky? I want to use them for Lucy. There are props for Little Unlucky Egg and Big Unlucky Egg, would you like to see which one you prefer? Shenyao asked, How unlucky is a little unlucky person? And how unlucky is a big unlucky person? System A little unlucky person is a relatively mild unlucky event, such as falling into a dog to eat shit, hitting a glass door, or falling into a pit. If you're a big unlucky person, it's like encountering a major car accident or falling off a cliff. Shenyao So when she had a car accident, she was actually a big unlucky person. Shenyao suddenly had a feeling of being stabbed in her heart. The system asked Shenyao, host, which item do you want to use? Shenyao didn't hesitate to choose the little unlucky prop, as long as she taught the other party a lesson, it wasn't about taking her life. The system breathed a sigh of relief and then took out the little unlucky item, dropped it on Lucy, and told Shenyao, this item needs to be implemented based on the scene and won't produce an immediate effect. Shenyao nodded and walked up to the CEO's office. She politely knocked on the door and went in when she heard an answer. As soon as she entered, she felt a chill rush to her forehead. She didn't know if it was because the air conditioning in the CEO's office was turned on too low or because Jiang Jinchuan himself emitted too much cold. She really felt much colder than outside. After Jiang Jinchuan returned to his office position, he flipped through the documents in his hand, but did not speak. Shen Yao had to take the initiative to ask, Mr. Jiang, are you looking for me? Is there anything I need? Jiang Jinchuan continued to browse through the documents in her hand, without looking up, but answered her question. Hmm, there are a few important projects that I want you to follow. Just now outside, I saw that you were quite eloquent, with good performance and acting skills. Coincidentally, the secretary department lacks talents like you. Shen Yao. He can speak. She couldn't distinguish for a moment whether he was praising or cursing. So for the upcoming social events, I plan to arrange for you to come with me and get to know a few investors. What do you think? Shen Yao really wants to refuse because she just wants to quietly stay in the office, blow on the air conditioning, use her elite career gold fingers to efficiently handle work, and then use the remaining time to fish and occasionally play some small games to relieve boredom. But as soon as she thought about the reward she received for completing the task, Shen Yao's heart became hot again. Her mind had already begun to flash with the rewards after completing the task, especially the dazzling wealth of billions she had imagined. Thinking of this, Shen Yao couldn't help but cheer herself up. It's okay, it's just boring socializing. Just grit your teeth and persist. If you persist, you can go even further than 10 billion yuan. Shen Yao's gaze became firm again as she looked at the thoughtful man on the other side, her red lips lifted lightly and said, Mr. Jiang, could you first tell me what I need to do? I will have secretary he communicate with you about the specific situation. Next, you still have about two hours of preparation time. Remember to go and dress yourself up in a slightly more formal outfit first, and then follow me on your journey. Seeing that she was still a bit stunned, Jiang Jinchuan immediately dialed secretary his internal phone number and said, come over here for a moment. In less than a minute, secretary he walked into the CEO's office with his five centimeter high heels clattering. Mr. Jiang, are you looking for me? Secretary he respectfully asked. Well, take this secretary Shen to the mall to buy two more formal outfits. In two hours, I will take her out for a party, Jiang Jinchuan instructed. Okay, Mr. Jiang. Secretary he nodded. You can also tell her about some project-related matters, Jiang Jinchuan added. Okay, Mr. Jiang, I understand, secretary he said. Well, these documents, Secretary Shen, please take them back. 
Jiang Jinchuan pointed to the neatly stacked documents on his desk. Okay, Mr. Jiang. Shen Yao reached out and picked up all the information he pointed to, holding it in her arms. Chapter 7 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 07 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Secretary he took Shen Yao to a shopping mall near the company, and then quickly picked out two sets of workplace-style matching suits at a clothing store, asking her to go to the fitting room to try them on. After entering this small world, Shen Yao had not even carefully examined her repaired body. Now, there is finally a chance. The mirror in the fitting room looked very bright under the light. Shen Yao nervously took off her commuter suit and began to carefully examine her repaired body in front of the mirror. In the mirror, her skin was as thick as cream, and her whole body was white and tender without any flaws, without any traces of a car accident. Now, the heart that Shen Yao had brought up finally came to an end. And, I don't know if it's her illusion, she always feels like her skin is even more delicate than before, because just now she touched it and found that the touch is even smoother and softer than before, and it's also very easy to leave marks. For example, when she gently pinched the inside of her arm just now, a red mark was left. In addition to these changes, Shen Yao was also surprised to find that her cup size had increased by a full circle, making it almost impossible to hold on to the underwear she was wearing now. Do we have a D now? Shen Yao licked her tongue. Going further down, when she saw the slender waist, Shen Yao blinked her eyes. It was even thinner than her previous waist, and it looked too lustful. Shen Yao even felt tempted. However, not only did her body undergo changes, but her face was also more delicate and beautiful than before, even adding a sense of sophistication and mystery. In the previous world, Shen Yao's appearance was already very high, her figure was also very good, and there were too many people chasing her. However, what she didn't expect was that her body, after being repaired by the system, was even more delicate and beautiful than before, more enchanting and charming. It's no exaggeration to say that now she looks like a top-tier beauty. Shen Yao couldn't help but smile and ask the system, how did you repair my body like this? The system smiled and said, host, do you still feel satisfied? Shen Yao nodded and said, I'm quite satisfied. This is much better than she imagined. The system explained, we have improved some data and added some attributes on the basis of your original body, which has shown such an effect. Shen Yao continued curiously, what data and attributes? System Summary For example, the data on body shape and appearance that you have seen has been elevated to the highest value. In addition, if it is related to attributes, we have added excellent attributes such as health, good physical strength, easy pregnancy, and multiple pregnancies to you. Shen Yang raised an eyebrow and said, how many pregnancies are easy to conceive? Yes, host, isn't our task just to have children? Only with easy and multiple pregnancies can your efficiency in having children be higher. Shen Yao At this moment, the sound of high heels walking suddenly came from outside the fitting room, and the door was immediately knocked on. Secretary Shen, do you need any help, was Secretary He's voice. Shen Yao knew that she had stayed inside for too long and didn't go out. Secretary He thought she had encountered some problem, or maybe Secretary He was just urging her. Secretary He, wait a little longer, I'll be ready soon, Shen Yao said to the door. Okay, Secretary Shen, if you need any help, please feel free to call me at any time. Secretary He finished speaking and the sound of her walking away in high heels came from outside the door. Shen Yao picked up the professional suit hanging on the side and began to apply it to herself in an orderly manner. After she finished changing one of the sets and saw herself in the mirror, she couldn't react for a moment. Secretary He chose a white shirt with a V-dot neck for her, paired with a tight black hip skirt that reached below her knees. I don't know if it's because the proportions of her repaired body are too amazing, or because the outfit itself is too close to the body. In short, the two lumps on her chest now look particularly bulging, and her buttocks are also particularly full and tight. Shen Yao felt a bit embarrassed looking at herself. 
To be honest, she was tempted by herself in front of the mirror. Perhaps it's because this outfit looks too stylish. Xin Yao didn't believe in evil and changed to another outfit hanging on the wall. As a result, the displayed effect was surprisingly similar. However, this second set didn't showcase her career line as much as the previous set with AV.neck, so she only showed some of it. Xin Yao thought it was acceptable and walked out wearing it directly. When Xin Yao walked out, the entire staff in the store fell silent, even Secretary He, who had always been calm and composed, had a hint of shock on his face. When Xin Yao walked up to them, the service staff in the store seemed to have finally come to their senses, and all the praise words were spewed out without reservation. Madam, you look so beautiful in this outfit. It's the first time we've seen someone who can dress our collection of clothes so beautifully. Just listen to these words, Xin Yao didn't take them too seriously. But what secretary he said next shocked her. Secretary Shen, you are really the person with the best physique and the best clothes I have ever seen. What secretary he didn't say was that Xin Yao's figure was almost perfect, making even a woman feel hot-eyed. Very good, that's what she's wearing, secretary he said to the nearby service staff very decisively. By the way, secretary Shen, there's another set. Have you tried that one? Secretary he seemed to be motivated and looked at Xin Yao with a hopeful light in his eyes. I've tried it, but the collar of that shirt is too big. I want to exchange it for something less revealing, Xin Yao said straightforwardly. Secretary he looked at Xin Yao's bulging chest and realized that when she was picking clothes earlier, she habitually followed her own flat chest standard and ignored Xin Yao's true situation. Just as she was about to take Xin Yao to pick another one, the service staff beside her approached with a smile on their face and said, Madam, I'll take you to pick a shirt that meets your requirements. Quickly, Xin Yao entered the fitting room again, changed into a new shirt, and walked out. This time, there was indeed no trace of grandeur on her chest, but a strong mysterious aura emanated, making people even more eager to explore. Secretary he secretly licked her tongue. Secretary Shen is really a top-tier beauty. Her every move and gesture is full of a seductive aura, but she is not aware of it yet. Her eyes often shine with clear light, making her appear pure and lustful, full of temptation. Chapter 8 Abstinent CEO's Eunuch Secretary 08 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Let's just do this one. Shen Yao saw that her chest was tightly covered and confidently chose the outfit she was wearing now. Okay, settle the bill and issue us an invoice, secretary he said as he walked up to the counter. Okay, please wait a moment. The cashier neatly folded the clothes and carefully put them into the bag. Shen Yao was wearing the same outfit as the one she wore during the interview, so there was only one set in the bag. As for her original outfit, it was packed separately in a bag. After settling the account, Xin Yao carried her belongings and followed Secretary He out of the store. Secretary He took her directly to the shoe store on the next floor. Buying shoes is quite fast, as long as you choose a basic and versatile pair, and add a suitable size without rubbing your feet. Xin Yao chose a pair of black high heels that were about 5 cm tall, similar to Secretary He's feet, and then took off her canvas shoes to start changing. When she straightened up from the chair, there was an inexplicable feeling that her aura had been elevated to a higher level. Shen Yao herself is 1.7 meters tall, and with the support of these 5 centimeter high heels, she looks tall and cool. Secretary Shen, how's it going? Does it fit well to wear? Does it rub your feet? Secretary he asked with concern. Shen Yao smiled and said, it's quite suitable. If you don't grind your feet, just let it be. In this way, they completed the shopping task with great efficiency. As they were taking the elevator to the first floor, Secretary He suddenly seemed to remember something and pulled Xin Yao around the exit direction of the mall, then turned to a cosmetic store not far away, which was the famous D brand. Secretary He chose a lipstick with a clear goal and then picked up a makeup air cushion to ask the cashier to pay the bill. Secretary He, won't they issue an invoice? 
Xin Yao reminded on the side. She knows that invoices are linked to reimbursement, and without them, reimbursement cannot be made. Secretary he shook his head gently, took the things packed by the teller, and handed them to Xin Yao. He smiled and said, this is something I personally gave you, and you don't need to be reimbursed by the company. Mr. Jiang only asked her to bring Xin Yao to buy clothes, without mentioning anything else. Even if she really wanted the company to reimburse her, she couldn't report it. So this is actually what secretary he himself wanted to give to Xin Yao. Xin Yao thought that the two small items in the bag added up to over a thousand, so she quickly waved her hand and said, this is too expensive. Secretary he, you don't need to spend money. I'll transfer the money to you on WeChat. The system kindly reminded Xin Yao, host, don't forget that your current WeChat balance is only 800 yuan. Xin Yao. Destroy the world. Secretary he smiled gently and said to Xin Yao, it's okay, Secretary Xin. When you officially become a regular, just treat me to a meal. Secretary he's words are very clever. As a senior who took care of Xin Yao and was the first person to show favoritism towards her, regardless of whether she gave her gifts or not, Xin Yao would treat her to dinner after becoming a regular employee. So her words were all meant to give the embarrassed Xin Yao a step down. Xin Yao certainly wouldn't brush off her kindness and looked up at her with a sweet smile, saying, Thank you, Sister He Wei. You're welcome, Secretary He smiled and put the things in Xin Yao's hand. The reason why secretary he gave Xin Yao a makeup cushion and lipstick was just a favor, to avoid her needing it temporarily during social gatherings, but she didn't have it on hand. On the way back to the company, Xin Yao clearly felt that there were more gazes projected from passers-by around her. When they returned to the office, they truly felt the gaze of almost everyone. Secretary he and Xin Yao separated and returned to their workstations. They quickly sorted out some information and took it to Xin Yao. These are some basic project materials related to today's socializing. For more information, I have previously created an electronic version of the archive file. I will find it later and send it to you. Please take a look and feel free to ask me if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Sister He Wei. As soon as Xin Yao received the information, she started flipping through it. Thanks to the assistance of elite props in the workplace, she didn't find it obscure or difficult to understand at all. When Xin Yao was about to see it, secretary he also sent her the electronic version of the document. Xin Yao thought to drink some water first, take a break, and then continue watching. When she picked up the water glass, she suddenly saw the small bag she had brought back today, which had not been opened yet. Xin Yao immediately picked it up and began to dismantle it. This lipstick from D family, which Xin Yao used to have before, belongs to the more orthodox red color. She has also used this air cushion, and it feels pretty good, right? Xin Yao looked at the small mirror attached to the air cushion, opened her lipstick, and began to apply it carefully to her mouth. After applying it evenly, Xin Yao happily put away her lipstick and then admired her rosy lips and white teeth in the mirror. Just as she was happily immersed in her own world, the system suddenly spoke out, Host, Jiang Jinchuan is here. Xin Yao. The person is already numb why didn't he come just now when she was working hard and studying the materials carefully? Did she come over while she was fishing and taking a break? Xin Yao pursed her lips in disgust, then quickly moved her lips to adjust her facial expression. Just as she adjusted to show a standard smile at any time, Jiang Jinchuan's cold voice rang out from behind. Secretary Shen. Shen Yao turned around and gave him a charming smile at the right moment. Mr. Jiang, are you looking for me? Jiang Jinchuan suddenly paused when he saw her red lips and new appearance, but soon regained his senses and said coldly, Grind me a cup of coffee now and deliver it to the office as soon as possible. Xin Yao quietly rolled her eyes in her heart. Just grind coffee, why are you so fierce? Before Jiang Jinchuan turned around and left, he pointed to the landline on Xin Yao's desk and said vaguely, Remember to keep the landline open at all times, let's not do it again. 
After speaking, he quickly left. Shen Yao glanced at the landline he pointed to and her eyebrows jumped. Which unscrupulous person secretly unplugged her landline phone line? Shen Yao. System, check it out for me. Who exactly did this? The system immediately checked and quickly came up with the result, it's that Lucy. Shen Yao sneered, it seems that Yin moves are not effective for her, so I'll just come openly. The system suddenly became nervous and said, host, you need to calm down. How do you plan to be transparent? Shen Yao slowly walked towards the CEO's dedicated coffee room and calmly said, it's nothing, just a simple treat to have a cup of coffee. Chapter 9 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 09 You are listening at NovelFull.audio When grinding coffee, Shen Yao specially made some extra, which will be useful later. When she finished making the coffee for Jiang Jinchuan and personally delivered it, Jiang Jinchuan was answering the phone. She gently placed the coffee on his table and was about to leave lightly. Unexpectedly, Jiang Jinchuan suddenly gestured to her to wait. Shen Yao. She's still in a hurry to go back and tidy up Lucy. What are you waiting for? However, as a qualified worker, she still compromised. Shen Yao stood in place and waited for about a minute before Jiang Jinchuan finally ended the conversation with the other party. Secretary Shen, thank you for your hard work, Jiang Jinchuan said after gently sipping his coffee. No hard work, no hard work. Shen Yao smiled. Well, it's not hard, fate is hard. We will depart together in about an hour, remember to watch the time, Jiang Jinchuan reminded. Okay, Mr. Jiang. Shen Yao still maintained a smile. By the way, Jiang Jinchuan suddenly paused and picked up an individually packaged wet towel from the table, handing it to Shen Yao. The lipstick on your lips may need to be removed in advance. Shen Yao. What's wrong, Mr. Jiang? Isn't it good dot looking? Shen Yao blurted out without hesitation, with a hint of imperceptible anger in her tone. No, Jiang Jinchuan said lightly, but his hand that handed out the wet wipes did not go back to recycling. What else does Shen Yao not understand? This dog man just thinks that she's wearing lipstick and looking unsightly. Okay, Mr. Jiang. Shen Yao coldly took the wet wipes he handed over and walked out of the CEO's office expressionlessly. However, what she didn't know was that at the moment the office door closed, Jiang Jinchuan's cheeks quickly turned unnatural red, along with his ear tips, which also faintly turned red. Moreover, the hand he handed out the wet wipes remained the same, without retracting it. If you look closely, you can still see it trembling slightly. Shen Yao outside the door pinched the wet wipes on her hand and couldn't help but frown at the thought of the hand she accidentally touched just now. System, your gods, aren't they all cannibalistic? Don't even appreciate beautiful women. The thought of Jiang Jinchuan asking her to wipe off her lipstick made Shen Yao's anger hard to dispel. The system is hesitant to confront her problem directly and stutters. Forget it, you're all on the same journey. What's the use of asking you? Shen Yao sighed. In no time, it was more important to tidy up Lucy. Shen Yao shook off her scattered thoughts and walked towards the coffee shop with steps. She poured out the coffee she had deliberately left behind just now, cleaned the utensils, tidied up the table, and walked out of the coffee room. Far away, Shen Yao saw Lucy still grinding and hesitating to leave the company at the workstation. It was great, as long as she was still there. Shen Yao walked leisurely to Lucy, holding coffee. Hi, Lucy. Shen Yao smiled and patted her shoulder. As soon as Lucy turned around, Shen Yao threw the coffee that had already cooled down directly at Lucy's face. A whole cup of coffee was poured onto Lucy without any leakage, and Shen Yao couldn't help but laugh as she looked at the coffee version of Lucy. Ah! Lucy screamed angrily, wanting to come straight over and hit Shen Yao. Shen Yao quickly took a few steps back with quick eyes and hands. Unexpectedly, the next second, Lucy suddenly fell to the ground very unlucky and couldn't get up. 
the system exclaimed in surprise, host, the little unlucky item has finally taken effect. Shen Yao. This has been waiting for so long. Shen Yao, you slut. Lucy, lying on the ground in embarrassment, cursed sharply. Lucy, I said you're such a person who doesn't drink and doesn't want to be punished. You have to provoke me repeatedly. This time, I'm just giving you a simple lesson. Next time, you can try some small moves and see if I can continue to deal with you. Shen Yao hates people like Lucy very much. Does she really treat others as soft persimmons that she can easily need? Shen Yao, wait for me. Lucy gritted her teeth. Shen Yao was too lazy to talk so much to her, so she turned around and walked back to her workstation. However, before formally sitting down, she still kept an eye out and looked at her desk and chairs. Upon closer inspection, she really discovered something was wrong, her chair, surprisingly, was all wet. Fortunately, she didn't sit down directly, otherwise she would be feeling uncomfortable now. Coincidentally, He Wei walked over and after a few glances, she could roughly guess what had happened. Secretary Shen, I happen to have a final discussion with you about the project matters. Let's go directly to the small conference room next door, He Wei paused for a moment. Then he continued, you take the computer and documents over first, and I'll stay here to contact the administrative department to handle the scene. Shen Yao couldn't have said anything wrong. She was so excited that tears welled up in her eyes. What kind of divine colleague is this? Thank you so much, Sister He Wei, please. Shen Yao sincerely thanked her. It's okay. He Wei waved her hand indifferently and then casually dialed an internal phone number using the landline on Shen Yao's desk. Shen Yao continued to do her homework seriously in the small conference room, holding a computer and materials. About five minutes later, He Wei walked in. Everything has been processed, and your chair has been replaced with a new one by the administration department. As for Lucy, she has also been kicked out of the company by the security guard. Shen Yao was surprised, so fast. He Wei nodded and said, Hmm, there's not so much time to waste with her. Shen Yao was overjoyed. Here, I'll tell you some more details to pay attention to. He Wei raced against time. Okay, Shen Yao quickly regained her senses. In about twenty minutes, the two of them had already communicated the details of the communication. He Wei noticed that Shen Yao was a bit nervous, so she comforted her and patted her hand, saying, Don't worry too much. Although you and Jiang always have to go to the table to discuss business, those investors basically dare not act recklessly. Shen Yao looked up and said, Really? He Wei was very certain and said, Of course, although they are investors, our group can persist in such large projects from beginning to end. Even if they want to invest in other companies, they need to be prepared for unfinished projects, so they still prefer to cooperate with us. Shen Yao Is this the protagonist halo of the small world? I love you. So your trip is essentially aimed at negotiating prices, and both sides will be polite and won't make the scene look bad. And as long as the other party makes an unpleasant scene or doesn't respect us, Mr. Jiang will immediately terminate all cooperation. Chapter 10 Abstinence CEO's Eunuch Secretary 10 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Shen Yao looked at He Wei with some admiration, she knew so much. Don't worry, Mr. Jiang only sent you on this trip to negotiate the price with the investors. The more you say, the more you can hold on and basically remain stable. I don't know why, but He Wei has inexplicable confidence in her and thinks she can definitely do it. And after communicating with her, He Wei can feel that she has a clear mindset, strong understanding and comprehension ability, and doesn't seem like a newcomer to the workplace at all. Thinking of this, He Wei couldn't help but admire Zhang's picky eyes. Over the years, Mr. Zhang's vision has not been very wrong. Sister He Wei, do I have to drink then? Shen Yao asked nervously. He Wei propped up her chin and thought for a moment, 
if you see someone among the people going with a Buddha bead on their wrist and always smiling when speaking, then it's likely you'll have to drink. On the contrary, without him, the overall situation is basically arbitrary. Shen Yao stiffened for a moment, so is this still a probability event? He Wei leaned closer to Shen Yao and whispered, he's the most difficult person to handle, and he's also a super alcoholic. He enjoys drinking with others, and after a few words, he has to drink a toast. No one can stop him. Shen Yao was curious and said, can't Mr. Jiang stop it? He Wei raised her eyebrows and said, you really got to the point. He doesn't like to ask Mr. Jiang for wine. Shen Yao breathed a sigh of relief. But he also likes to find people under Mr. Zhang's command to make wine. Shen Yao. But if he goes too far, Mr. Jiang will still stop him, don't be afraid, he Wei encouraged her. Shen Yao let out a secret sigh in her heart. Asterisk after leaving the small conference room, Shen Yao remembered her poor tolerance for alcohol and quietly asked the system, is there any prop that can keep me from drinking a thousand glasses? The system hesitated for a moment before silently searching for props for Shen Yao. After a moment, host, I found an alcohol absorber. Can you see if it's the kind you're looking for? Shen Yao immediately became interested and said, let me take a look. On the virtual display screen, a transparent flat container of the size of a coin is instantly displayed. The system explained, the main function of this alcohol absorber in our system is to first absorb the alcohol in your mouth, then compress that alcohol, and finally evaporate it into the air. It sounds quite reliable, Shen Yao looked forward to it. However, does its appearance look so mini? Is the effect really that powerful? Shen Yao hesitated slightly. Of course, but the prerequisite is that you must follow the standard steps when using it, the system emphasized. What standardized steps? Shen Yao asked. First, you need to put it in your mouth and wait for it to slowly disperse into small active spots before you can start using it. Secondly, when drinking alcohol, you must not swallow it immediately. You need to let the alcohol stay in your mouth for at least one second to allow the prop to absorb it. Finally, after swallowing the liquid that has been absorbed with alcohol, your lips need to be slightly open to allow the small active points to quickly pass through with alcohol molecules. Shen Yao was surprised when the system said that the alcohol absorber was like a living organism. But the most crucial question she almost forgot to ask was, System, how long can this prop last? The system replied, 24 hours. Shen Yao nodded thoughtfully, then you can put it in my mouth now. Preparing in advance is better than using it temporarily, as it has a validity period of 24 hours, which is completely sufficient. Good host, please accept it. As soon as the system finished speaking, Shen Yao felt a chill in her mouth, but she couldn't touch the physical object. Quickly, she felt as if something cool was popping out of her mouth, little by little. It must be what the system called a little active point. Secretary Shen, Jiang Jinchuan's voice suddenly echoed behind him. Shen Yao turned to look at him and said, Mr. Jiang. We're about to depart, how are you preparing? Shen Yao replied to him, I'm fine, Mr. Jiang. Hmm. Jiang Jinchuan spoke faintly, and then her gaze began to wander on her red lips. Do you need me to personally wipe off the lipstick on your mouth? Shen Yao. Jiang Jinchuan's eyes flickered slightly, and he immediately took out a piece of individually packaged wet wipes from his suit pocket. Shen Yao. She believes that Jiang Jinchuan is wholesale wet wipes. Jiang Jinchuan slowly tore open the packaging of the wet wipes. Just as he was about to pull them out, Shen Yao quickly took the wet wipes from his hand and smiled dryly, Mr. Jiang, I'll do it myself. I don't need to trouble you, old man. Jiang Jinchuan. Is he very old? Shen Yao rubbed her lips a bit rudely, and when she felt it was almost over, she suddenly looked up and noticed that Jiang Jinchuan was uncomfortable and didn't open his face. Shen Yao. Is it because her actions were so rude that Jiang Jinchuan couldn't bear to watch? What she didn't know was that after her forceful movements, 
her lips were slightly red and swollen, and the edges of her lips were also tinged with a faint red color, as if someone had lingered above them, exuding a different charm. The driver has already arrived downstairs, let's go down now, Jiang Jinchuan said, looking elsewhere. Okay, Mr. Jiang, Shen Yao quickly replied. Jiang Jinchuan took a step ahead, and Shen Yao followed suit, maintaining a distance of about one meter from him at any time. While waiting for the elevator, Shen Yao stood behind Jiang Jinchuan, looking curiously at the height difference between him and herself. She guessed whether he was 1.88 meters or 1.9 meters, but suddenly her sharp eyes caught sight of his slightly red ears. Hmm. Did even the icy and cold deities have such moments? I don't know what he was thinking, that's why he suddenly did this. Shen Yao. He shouldn't be thinking about something strange, right? Shen Yao rolled her eyes a few times and quietly poked the system, hey, can you see what your deity is thinking in his mind? The system spoke weakly, host, I cannot blaspheme the gods, even the gods who descend to the mortal world cannot. Shen Yao. All right, then forget it. Then he couldn't help but mutter quietly, it seems you're not very powerful either. System.